Hello. In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how Itential automates Cisco IOS port VLAN configuration. I'll start out by giving you an overview of the automation in Itential. The automation flow will consist of form input, which will be transformed into the payload needed for the Itential prebuilt. The first step in the prebuilt is a pre-check. The pre-check confirms that the requested inventory is not already consumed. Followed that is a provisioning step where we'll send the configuration into a Cisco router using a template and the supplied input from the form. Finally, at the end of the pre-built, we'll have the post check where we'll confirm the provisioning has taken place and the port is up. After the overview of the automation, I'll demo it on a live device. And now that we've covered the agenda, I'll go ahead and hop into the platform. On this screen, you can see two main tasks. There's a transformation followed by a port turnip. The transformation takes the input data from the form and converts it into the payload needed for the pre-built. The pre-built is the port turnip. This is a workflow where folks typically do end-to-end -end automations. So inside of here, you would consume Itential pre-builds or add your own business logic as well. I'm going to click into the pre-built here, the port turnip iOS. Inside of here, the main tasks are the pre-check as we discussed earlier, the provisioning, and the post-check. Next, we'll click into the command templates. This is what actually powers the pre and the post checks. Inside of here, you can see the operational command where we do the show interfaces with some variable substitution to make sure that the interface does not exist in our pre-check. Very similar to that, we have a post check. Inside of the post check, what we can see here is that the rule has changed, although the command is the same. The difference here is that we're making sure to confirm that the interface is actually up. Next up is our provisioning template. This is a configuration template inside of Itential that has the provisioning syntax in here for the configuration to actually turn up that port on the device. On the right side you have the template and on the left side we have some sample variable substitution. This will actually be replaced with real-time data when we perform the automation. Now that we've covered the building blocks of the pre-built, I'm going to click on the device itself. This is the device we'll be using for today's demonstration. Inside of my lab I can see it's online and I'm going to scroll down to the configuration to just confirm and show what the configuration looks like for interfaces. Inside of here we can only see Gigabit Ethernet 1, so we'll go ahead and add an additional sub-interface here. I'm going to execute the automation I showed you earlier. We'll use a manual trigger. Inside of here I've got some configuration typed in for my variables. We're going to use iOS, we're going to set sub-interface 50, and we're going to use an IP address of 10, 20, 1, 50, with a subnet mask of 255, 255, 252. I'm going to leave the auto approve off and unchecked. What that means is when I run this automation here, it'll pause for manual verification along the way. The automation has already begun. I'll go ahead and click into the manual task now, and that'll allow me to start approving some of the manual steps. When I click on work task here, it'll pop up with the results from my pre-check. Everything green looks like everything has passed. I'm going to go ahead and click the response here just to confirm what the device actually sent back. I can see that I ran the operational command show interfaces, but that does not exist, so I got the invalid input. Next up, I get the dry run. This is the configuration proposed based on the template with my data submitted from the form. Everything looks good to me, so I'll go ahead and progress this step as well. At this point, Itential will be submitting the configuration to the device. Upon completion of that step, we'll execute the post checks. Again, very similar to the operational commands that we sent from the pre-check, the same operational commands will be sent as the post-check, and this time when we execute that, we expect to see the post-check return back, letting us know that the configuration exists and the port is operational. We can tell by the green here that it is, and it's passed, our new rule has passed. The response also indicates that the port is up. I'll go ahead and mark this success, and we'll move into a pre-post comparison. The pre-post comparison allows us to look at a difference here. We get to see the config diff from the pre-check as opposed to the post-check, and that'll indicate to us the changes. When we do the show command, we see the prior results from the pre-check were red here, letting us know the port did not exist, and the green tells us the port was there. I can also go back to the visualize step here and just show you where, from an audit perspective, we are on the automation. Inside of here, we can see the pre-built where it's sitting now at that manual pre-post comparison. 
Popping back into our manual steps here, I'll just go ahead and approve this so we can complete the automation. Now that that's been completed, our automation is complete, I'm going to pop into our configuration manager and just pull another live configuration here. This time I expect to see that the port has been configured with our VLAN assignments as well as our IP address. And from here we can tell that the port 1.50 is there and exists. Thanks everyone. That concludes today's demo.